Okay guys, in this video, I'm going to go through a summary of all the equations you need to remember for the acids and bases topic under AQA A-level chemistry. I'm not going to go into crazy detail. I'm just going to summarize all of the equations and it's up to you to apply them to questions and practice. All right. So first off, we're going to have our real simple one, pH. Okay. Do you remember what our pH expression is? pH equals minus log H plus concentration. Okay, simple as that. You can literally just put in your calculator minus, press the log button, and then in here you would just insert whatever H plus value you calculated in the question. Okay, that's going to be the concentration of hydrogen ions. Next one you need to know is the inverse log. Okay, so you need to be able to change this if you know the pH to then work out the H plus. So you're kind of doing it in the opposite order. And the way that you would do this, it would become H plus equals the inverse log, which is simply 10 to the power of minus whatever the pH is. Okay, so inverse log to the minus pH. All right, so let's say your pH was four, it'd be 10 to the minus four. All right, I'm going to write this out for you so you know exactly what to do in your calculator. 10 to the minus pH. Simple as that. Okay. And this is referred to as the inverse log function. Quick tip here, when we're dealing with pH, always put your answer to two decimal places. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, next up, we've got the weak acid dissociation constant Ka. All right, do you remember what this is? This is going to be the concentration of products over concentration of reactants. So let's write out an equation for a typical weak acid dissociation. HA, just the symbol for a weak acid. Equilibrium arrow, signifying dissociation, breaks up into a H plus ion, a proton, and a salt, or an A minus, okay? If we follow this and we do concentration of products over concentration of reactants, it's going to be concentration of H plus multiplied by concentration of A minus, divided by a concentration of the HA or the weak acid. Now, sometimes you'll see this as HX. Um, so let's write that here. Sometimes you'll see it as HX and then obviously X minus up here, depending on the question, textbook, all that stuff, right? Now, there is something you really need to be aware of here, an assumption that we make when it comes on to weak acid calculations. And that is whereby we assume that the H plus and the A minus dissociate in a one-to-one -one ratio. So essentially they're exactly the same, right? And in that case, we can simply square them. Okay, so like if this is two and this is two, it's the same as two squared, right? So what we would do then is we would simplify this to Ka equals H plus concentration squared divided by HA concentration, okay? Now only use this assumption and this simplification when you're doing calculations outside of buffers. If in the exam question, they explicitly ask you, what is the weak acid dissociation expression for X, Y, or Z, uh, for example, ethanoic acid, do not make this assumption. Okay, always stick with the full expression. Just keep that in mind. Right, so we've done Ka, you also need to know pKa. Okay, pKa, very similar to this expression right here. So if we have pKa, what does this equal? very similar to this, minus log Ka. Okay, real simple here. The way I like to remember it back when I did A levels was this lowercase p just stands for minus log. So up here, if lowercase p is minus log, it's going to be minus log H plus concentration. And down here, if it's lowercase p Ka, it's going to equal minus log Ka. All right, simple as that. And just with the inverse log, you also need to know the inverse log of p Ka. So it's going to be Ka equals inverse log function. So it's going to be very similar to up here, 10 to the minus pKa. Okay, essentially these two equations are identical, except we just switch out pH for the pKa. Okay, so next up, we're going to be having the ionic product of water, which is given the symbol Kw. Okay, so I'm going to do some quick theory here regarding the dissociation of water. So let's say we break up this water molecule into H plus and OH minus, okay? Now, the thing you have to keep in mind here is that the dissociation lays so strongly to the left 
and the concentration of water molecules is so much greater than the concentration of its dissociated products that we consider it to be a constant, okay? So what we do is we, even though for Ka you had concentration of products over concentration of reactants, we view this as a constant, we get rid of it, and we just have concentration of products. And that's the equation you have to remember, Kw equals H plus OH minus concentration, okay? Practice some questions using this well, for strong bases as well as pure water. Now mentioning pure water, we actually have to manipulate this expression again, okay? It's no longer Kw equals H plus and OH minus concentration. We make another assumption, okay? We assume that very similar to the Ka expression where we square the H plus because these are in a one-to-one -one dissociated ratio, make the exact same assumption with water and assume that these are in a one-to-one -one ratio. Therefore, we can simplify it directly to Kw equals H plus squared. Okay, this is only applicable to pure water when only H2O molecules are present in solution. Do not make this assumption for strong bases and anything that is not pure water, okay? Right, next thing you need to be aware of is a slight caveat to the Ka expression, okay? And this only applies to half neutralization. So let's go through our Ka expression again and let me explain what's going on. Right, so this is our Ka expression, okay? We have something that we refer to as the neutralization volume, okay? So let's say we're dealing with a weak acid, you would have a fixed volume of an alkali to add to this acid for it to be neutral, okay? And that's where you have the color change occurring in a titration, it's the neutralization volume or the equivalence point, okay? Now at half neutralization, that is going to be exactly half the neutralization volume. So where am I going with this? We need to be aware of the assumption that at half neutralization volume, HA concentration equals A minus concentration, okay? The concentration of the weak acid equals the concentration of the salt. So going back to our Ka expression here, let's say for example, the concentration of salt is three moles per decimeter cube, just as a random example. And the concentration of the weak acid is also three moles per decimeter cubed. These can simply cancel and all you're left with is the H plus concentration, okay? So in that instance, you can simplify this expression at half neutralization only to be Ka equals H plus concentration, okay? Because we're able to cancel out the top and the bottom of the fraction for the salt and the weak acid concentration. Okay, now it's really important to know the follow-up for this for follow-on questions in your exams. If we can make the assumption that Ka equals H plus concentration, you can make the follow-up assumption that pH equals pKa, okay? Or if you wanna look at it this way around, it would be pKa equals pH, okay? Whatever way you wanna look at it is completely fine. But you need to be aware of this because it is in the specification and it can come up in your exams. All right, so last equations we're gonna look at is in regards to diluting, okay? So let's say we're adding some sort of distilled water to an acid, more specifically a strong acid that is completely dissociated, we're going to be able to work out the new concentration and the new pH. So let's get that on the screen. So H plus final concentration, after you've added the deionized or distilled water is gonna be the initial H plus concentration multiplied by initial volume divided by final volume. All right, so let's say we started with like 250 centimeters cubed. We added 100 centimeters cubed of distilled water. You're gonna be left with 350 centimeters cubed final volume. All right, just keep that in mind. And that is gonna give us our final H plus ion concentration. And then we can use that, feed that into our pH expression. Okay, and then that will give us our pH after dilution. And this is in reference to strong acids, okay? Because strong acids are going to completely dissociate and the H plus ion concentration is gonna be one to one. So we can apply exactly the same thing to our hydroxide concentration for dilution of a base. 
So if we wanted to work out what our final OH minus concentration is, you would follow exactly the same steps. So you'd have your OH minus initial multiplied by initial volume over final volume. Okay, simple as that. You can literally replace it just with OH minus instead of H plus. That is all of the equations you need to be aware of for the acids and bases topic. There are caveats, okay? You need to practice questions. Knowing the equations is great, but if you don't practice questions, you're going to come to a point where you're like, I don't know what the hell to do. I'm really stuck. And you'll evaluate all of your life choices, okay? So practice questions, go through your past papers. There's a bunch of acids and bases video breakdowns on my channel, and there's plenty more on YouTube you can find. Focus on neutralizations and buffers because those normally make up the five, six mark questions. But don't neglect the smaller two to three mark questions regarding ionic product water, KW and KA expressions. Keep those in mind as well. If you found the video helpful, smash the like button, subscribe, comment any questions down below. Best of luck in your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.